Good morning, everybody. And of course, as soon as I start recording, I've got an airplane. It is incredibly warm out today. Just an absolute scorcher. It's supposed to be over 100 degrees every day for the next two weeks. Uh, yesterday was our only reprieve. It only got up to about 95 yesterday. So it wasn't too bad yesterday, but it's supposed to be a scorcher for the next couple weeks and maybe longer than that. I think it was about about 10 years ago or so. I think out of a, a 35 day period, I think we had something like 27 days or it was almost 30 days. It was over 100 degrees every single day and no rain. That was an absolute scorcher. We had a major drought that year. That was pretty bad, but we've gotten tons of rain this year. So I'm not too worried about a drought even with this heat wave coming through. It is a super, super busy one today. I don't have that many people bringing junk in anymore. I've basically cut that off completely. I still buy some stuff from some people, but uh, mostly it's just high volume people and they haul it straight in for me. Uh, I still buy a few things like that truck came in yesterday and I buy a few converters here and there. But uh, with prices dropping really hard and fast, they dropped another $40 now uh, that people just aren't willing to sell stuff, which is fantastic for me. Give me a chance to maybe get caught up. I just got this old Viking in, not much left of it. It did have a good run in 235 in it, or 261 actually. The guy who had it took and cut the center out of it so he could get the motor out a little bit easier. It's got a pretty good hood on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Those do sell pretty good. I've got it unbolted ready to go. I just can't lift it off there by myself, so I'll just use the loader. And then on the inside, I already stripped out the dash. I pulled out the instrument cluster. I pulled out the temperature controls, the ashtray, the uh, radio delete, all the easy stuff. It does have the original ignition with the original key in it still, which is probably worth something. And it's got this funky turn signal deal. It's probably worth something, but it's too hot to keep pulling parts. I am done. I am absolutely cooked just from pulling those few parts. It's kind of a shame. It's got a pretty good driver's door and then the cab is pretty good on this, but I haven't really had much interest, so I don't have anywhere to put it. I don't want to haul it clear out to my place just to sit on it forever. So I'm going to go ahead and lift that hood off of there and fire up the loader and smash the cab in and put it in the dumpster. Some make it, most don't. This one didn't make it. I'm gonna go ahead and take it and throw it in the box now, and then that box will be full, and hopefully they can pick it up today or tomorrow, and I can fill it again. All right, now that I'm done with that truck, I'm gonna show you guys the proper way to change the oil in a Ford truck. As soon as this oil finishes draining, I'm gonna show you the proper way to fix the rest of the truck. No, but in all seriousness, it was kind of a shame to crush that truck. It was in beautiful condition when we got it. Even the interior was really nice in that thing. Not a speck of rust, which part of that's because the bed on these is fiberglass. But uh, the cab itself and the doors, all that were rust free. The truck did run perfect. The uh, transmission slipped in, I think, third gear, third or fourth gear, it slipped a little bit. And so it was a matter of time for the tranny went all the way. But you can buy a whole vehicle cheaper than what you can replace the transmission for around here. So they just went ahead and scrapped it. Just got this funky little contraption in. Not even sure what this thing is. It's got a bucket that was on the front of it. It's got two car or trucker ends. So I don't know if it was four wheel drive or what the deal was there. <laughs> I don't know if maybe it had two engines on it. I don't know. It's got a seat up there. It pivots in the middle. It had hydraulic arms on it, but he kept those. Yeah, this is a unique setup right here looks like it's yeah just got a an axle hub right there for the pivot <laughs> some fancy steering right here hooked up to pitman arm and a gearbox up there someone definitely put some ingenuity into this thing 
necessity is the mother of invention. I have no clue what the necessity was for this thing, but <laughs> they, ha they had a good idea for it, I'm sure. But it's just junk now. It's got a double pivot on it. Not only does it go back and forth side to side, but it's also independent back here so that this back axle can rotate and it doesn't have to stay completely level and uh, parallel with the front. So that's kind of neat. A local company called, they've got a forklift they want to sell us, so we're going to run out there and grab that now. And we made it back. I got a really cool table, and then I got this shelf, rack, thingamajigger right here. That's really handy. A big battery, a medium battery, the forklift, both of the batteries are junk, and the uh, big battery came out of the forklift, but the forklift still works, he said, but the cost of a new battery, they priced a new battery, it was almost $10,000. So they said, for an old, worn out forklift, we'll just buy a new forklift. And then there was a whole bunch of uh, copper wire, wiring harnesses. Yeah, when we went out there, I thought all we were going to get was a forklift and two batteries. And I thought one of the batteries was still in the forklift. I never dreamed it was going to be a forklift, two pallets on batteries, and then a whole bunch of copper wire, and then a shelf, and then a table. <laughs> we ended up buying a whole lot more than I thought we were. And they had more to sell, just we couldn't fit it on the truck. But uh, So it ended up being from what I thought was going to be like a 20 minute ordeal, turned into about an hour, hour and a half ordeal by the time we got done looking at stuff. So. We'll probably go back and buy some more at some point in time. I couldn't film loading the stuff just because of the way the company is and they don't want cameras out there and stuff like that and that's the way most big companies are. Like the big factory that my dad's been cleaning up, he's been hauling a lot of stuff out of there. It's just no cameras at all period on the property. They will get very upset with you if you bring a camera on the place. But he's been hauling tons of stuff in. There's a lot of, everything is brand new. There's nothing that's used. Everything we've been getting from them is brand new. Like these here are solid steel. We've been throwing those and prepared. We've been shipping about, uh, what was it? I'm trying to remember now. I think about 20 tons every two weeks of stuff like this. And uh, there's some other stuff I'll show you here in a minute. There's a bunch of this stuff. I, I can barely touch anything. It's really hot. It's about 102 degrees right now. Whew, hot. But these here are solid stainless. I mean, all this is solid stainless. And if I remember right, these weigh uh, six pounds a piece. And there's a bunch of those in here. And there's some smaller pieces like this. I think these weigh two pounds a piece. This is aluminum, solid aluminum, has stainless bolts through it, so you have to pull those two stainless bolts out. Then those are stainless, and then the rest is aluminum. And this is just kind of a hodgepodge in this crate. A lot of these crates, I have absolutely no clue what's in them. They're steel sealed. But here's a whole crate of nothing but these. Very heavy. There's a lot of weight just in here, because that's uh, two layers thick. <laughs> so there's a lot of weight there. I'll check these out. These here are all stainless solid stainless and this entire crate is full with them you see down in there tons of cool stuff and there's a bunch of crates like this here that are just a, a hodgepodge once again it's got some stuff like that can go in the prepared there's a bunch of clean stainless in here there's a little bit of aluminum in here and then these here are solid copper wire inside yeah, solid copper inside i should say it's just strands of copper but there's about that thick of insulation on the outside and the rest of that solid copper and then the ends of it are uh, I believe nickel plated copper so there's what three or four of those in here these crates here are clear full of aluminum bunches of random stuff now the thing is is we're buying the stuff by weight and we've got to buy the wood and all and there's a bunch of trash like in this one here there's a bunch of trash in there we have to buy all this cardboard we have to separate all that stuff out but yeah and it just goes over there and this is just a tiny fraction of what we've been getting out of there mountains of the stuff and that's not counting all the stuff that we've already sold and on top of that we've hauled a bunch of loads out to my place outside of town but we got a bunch of these i think i've shown these these guys before you can go over here without falling through and breaking something what's in here oh, a bunch more of those yeah some of them are more full than others yeah these here this is all solid aluminum except for it has stainless bolts holding it together down here they got two big electric motors these are like i think they're 860 volt or 960 volt something like that brand new but there's absolutely no use for voltage like that and then it's got these big fans and then that's a solid aluminum radiator all the way down and it's about that thick great big massive solid aluminum radiator and then it's got insulation on the inside so a guy just has to take it all apart yeah all that's polished aluminum there just has stainless bolts holding it i think i told told you guys before what i want to do with some of these which i've already got them out there at my place but i want to just take everything apart on them to where it's just the basic frame and then the top on it and then we've got all those stairways that i've shown you in previous vlogs those bolt on right here there and down there and then you have a stairway going down to the ground coming up here and i want to put a couple of these beside my junkyard cabin that way i can get up on the roof fairly easy 
then I want to take a few of them out back and put up back and uh, maybe build some deer blinds. I don't really do any hunting, but I like to watch wildlife every now and then, so it'd be kind of neat to set them back there. But yeah, they're just about done with this stuff. They don't have a whole lot left. We've been hauling and hauling, or I haven't really been hauling. My dad's been doing all the hauling, but we've just been hauling and hauling and hauling like crazy to get stuff out of there, but we're just about done now. Some of it, like the stuff in this crate right here, this is basically just trash. This is all plastic, and see, we had to buy that and along with the rest of this and we had to buy all the wood and so we're, we're getting it for a fair price but we're getting a lot of trash out of the deal too so it is what it is kind of the bad part about it is is we absolutely cannot sell any of this stuff it all has to be destroyed everything we get from them has to be recycled it just that's the policy they had with us up front and we agreed to it so we're going to abide by that we've had a lot of people wanting to buy the stuff to use it for different things and just, we can't sell it it is what it is if we didn't agree to that we wouldn't get nothing so <laughs> i'd rather just agree to destroy it all and destroy it all so we're not stepping on any toes and doing anything we shouldn't do rather than not get anything at all. I'm going to go ahead and sell my topper. I was really wanting to keep this and put it on a truck bed trailer and use it because these are really handy. It has the windows that open on the side. I've got one of these on my trailer already. It doesn't have the side windows but it's the high rise topper. Works great so I wanted to make a second one of those but I'm probably never going to do it. I've had this for two years laying here so it was laying over there. I had to move it over here so I'm going to go ahead and sell that but he's been here cutting trees all afternoon and making pretty good progress. I haven't been able to see in this area for a long time. There's some cool stuff in here that I forgot was even back here. Like there's a really cool pair of iron wheels. Those are pretty neat. I think they're off an old manure spreader if I had to guess. I don't know what else is down here. An old auger, a bunch of old flathead heads. Probably just go ahead and scrap all those. Some rotary hose. Bunches of bicycles back here. Yeah, it's a total different world back here now that these trees are gone. There's still a bunch to cut, but he ran out of tree killer. It's going to be awesome when this area is cleaned out because then I can take all those crates and machines and all that sort of stuff and put them over here. And I can have bins laid out and I can sort through the stuff, separate it all, rather than have to do it all in the middle of the road. So I'm really looking forward to getting this corner cleaned out. This thing here is way heavier than I thought it was. We figured around 4,000 pounds, and in reality it was 6,000 pounds. It's a whole ton heavier than what we thought it was. So I guess that was a pretty good deal. And the guy that dropped this tractor off went ahead and got it stripped out, all the parts off of it that he wanted to keep. And then he started talking like he wants to leave it here and he doesn't want to load it back on his trailer and haul it in for me. And I said, no, we can't be doing that. I don't have a way of hauling this big beast. I can't really haul it on anything I have. So uh, he's supposed to come back tomorrow and load it back up on his trailer. We're going to pull the tires off of it at that point in time and then he's going to haul it on in for me. One more thing I've got to take care of while I'm here before I head out is I've got to take pictures of this old Jeep. I believe I have it sold. The guy's wanting pictures of it. I priced it pretty reasonable. I usually do with my stuff. Everybody says that if I price it reasonable, it would sell fast, but you'd be shocked how much stuff never does sell, even though it's priced very reasonable. I think some of the problem is my version of reasonable and other people's version of reasonable sometimes aren't exactly the same. I usually try to price stuff that I'm gonna crush at about $300 over scrap value. That pays for my time of not crushing it because it takes a lot more time to load it on someone's trailer and deal with answering phone calls and messages and all that sort of stuff than it does just to crush it. But uh, that's what I did with this here. It'll crush for about 600. I told him 900. He said, send me pictures. So I'm going to do that now. Hopefully he buys it. And I don't have to crush it. Sometimes if I have something that's got really cool wall art or yard art or something like that on it, I'll price it higher. But usually I price stuff at about 300 over scrap value. I'm out here at my place now. My camera is overheating pretty bad. But I got a really cool truck in. I want to show it to you guys. Got to drive around back here. I'm getting ready to order that brush hog I talked about before. And I come out here and mow some of this grass down. Because it's getting pretty bad. Skyler hauled this truck out yesterday, but I wasn't really recording anything yesterday, so I didn't film it then much. But I'll show it to y'all now. It is a 1945 Chevrolet. Pretty clean truck. Skyler bought this at an auction for me. He had to buy the hood separate from the truck because they had the truck sitting there and it had a nasty wooden flatbed on it. And luckily they ripped that off and left it on the property. But he got it bought. It's got a 216 in it. I'm sure it's locked up from getting rained in, but really the truck's not in too bad a condition. The worst rust on the truck is up there above the windshield. It's pretty rotted out up there. Rats build a nest up there like they always do. But the doors are in good shape. The cab's in pretty good shape. It's not all crunched in. It hasn't had stuff dropped on it. it hasn't had pipe run through the back of it or anything like that. It's got a few scratches right there above that rust spot, but that's about it. Go around to the other side, but yeah, this is a 1945. And the way you can tell is because it's painted. The grill is painted. All this trim here is painted. 
1945, right after the war, they did make a few trucks and they were everything was painted. They didn't put chrome on them. Inside the truck, pretty clean really, for being an old field truck. Normally these things are up to the seat with a rat nest. It's got a little bit of rust down there on the floor. But yeah, the dash is pretty clean, just rotted out really bad up there. But you can find those panels there. I've actually had those and sold those before. And you can just replace that panel. It actually still has the headliner in it, believe it or not. It's crazy. They said they parked this truck right where it was sitting years and years ago. They bought it at an auction, drove it home, parked it. But yeah, I will probably try to sell this cabin front clip all together as one unit for a rat rod or something like that. It does have one dent in the fender up there as well. But uh, if nobody buys it, what I'll probably do is pull the cab off and sell just the cab. Because I think somebody will buy that cab even with that rust up there. And then I'll whack the nose right there and turn it into a wall hanger. I'd rather not do that though. I'd rather sell the whole cabin clip together. But you got to go where the money's at. So if I have to cut it, I will cut it. Pretty cool truck. I thought it was a 46, but they said they have all the paperwork on it and they say it's a 45. So and it, I've had a 45 that had a title and everything before that I know they made 45s. But yeah, I definitely need to get out here and take care of all these trees. So I'm going to be ordering that. I don't know how long it's going to take to get it here. Uh, they said it would probably take about two to three weeks to get it delivered. So I'm going to go ahead and order it probably tonight. And hopefully it'll be here sometime mid-July. And I can come in here and make a video of cleaning house out here in this field. And last thing for the day, I've got to run in here and grab something that's sold on Facebook Marketplace. I've actually been selling a few things on there lately. Where is that? Here it is. This pile of knobs sold on Marketplace. Got 20 bucks for them. I don't know if you guys remember, I pulled those last winter out of that farm cleanup I did. Pulled them off a piece of furniture. I haven't actually listed these or those other things on there yet, but I'm going to put those on there as well. And I'm sure they'll sell pretty quickly. I also sold a couple of throttle bodies and something else, I forget what, on eBay. So I got a bunch of stuff to package, but I don't have AC in my garage at home and it's brutal hot in there. So I'll probably wait till uh, late tonight or early in the morning to package all this stuff. And I got good news. The guy is going to buy that Jeep. He said he's supposed to be here probably next Thursday and he's buying a bunch of other stuff from me up in the building. Some of the stuff I sold pretty cheap. He's going to buy all that as well. So he's going to come up, make a trip and haul home a whole load of stuff. So I'm definitely glad it found a new home and I don't have to crush it. But right now, it is brutally hot, I'm out of water, I'm tired, so I am going home. I'll see you guys in the morning. And good morning, we're back again. It's been a busy morning already. He's taking that down to the claw for me. It almost went through his trailer, so we had to stack the, the sides off the uh, engine underneath it so it wouldn't fall through his trailer. And that's why I didn't want to haul it on my trailer. He wanted just to leave it here. He wanted to pull some parts off of it, you know, like this tire here and some other stuff, and I said, no way. I knew something that heavy would bust right through my trailer, no problem. So I said, if you want to sell it to me, you've got to haul it down there for me. So while he's doing that, I'll show you some of the other stuff that came in this morning. Bolts, bolts, and more bolts. Tons of them came in. And I'm not sure what's in this crate here. I can't remember. Oh, a great big gear. And the hub that it goes on. And then over here, we got that big beast. That weighs 3,000 pounds. So this truck I bought the other day, and it's been sitting out there and I never really paid attention to what was in the back of it and I found something pretty cool. I set it aside but before we do that you guys want to see a little bit of slow-mo? This table was on top of it and I thought you know what that'd be kind of cool watching. Whoa if I don't break it already I didn't realize it was that poorly balanced. But uh, I'm gonna put that in there and I want to get some slow-mo action of crushing it in the crusher and see what happens with this glass. I'm sure it's gonna blow up. I hope that turns out okay. I won't find out until I edit it, but just as it got to the table, the uh, the lid was blocking the sunlight and I didn't realize that. And so as soon as it got to the table, I got a bunch of glare, glare on my lens and <laughs> I hope it didn't mess it up, but it was still pretty cool. Uh, hopefully it looks good on slow-mo. Well, I just sold that little topper that I had in here that I was gonna keep that I decided I was gonna sell. It was in the way and a buddy of mine wanted it. So I sold it to him pretty reasonable, a whole lot less than what you could buy a new one for. So he came and got that. He's got some kids, he likes to take them camping and every now and then it'll start raining while they're camping. And so uh, that'll give him some place to get out of the rain. But it's starting to get warm out here, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you this really cool thing that I bought, and then I'm gonna close the video out. Check that out. Is that not the coolest thing? Not very often I buy airplanes. I mean, I know it's not a real airplane, but still, that is pretty cool. What this was, is this was a swing. It has one of the chains on it still up here. I've never seen a swing like this before. That's pretty crazy. 
and it had a place for hooks back there and then it would swing back and forth and kids could climb in it and swing back and forth on it. I don't know if it came from a playground or, or what the deal is. I've never seen one like this. It's got some rust in it. It's rusted out right there. That pipe's completely rusted, gone. It's rusted out a few places here and there throughout, but still, it's just really unusual. I don't know that it's worth anything. It's probably not worth anything. I'm probably just gonna wind up crushing it, but it's just really unusual. I thought about taking it and just kind of halfway welding it back together to where it'll hold together and take it back in the trees on my place, but yeah, it'll just fall apart back there. So if I find somebody that wants to buy it, then maybe I'll go ahead and sell it, but otherwise I'll probably just go ahead and make a crushing video out of it. It even turns. I got in here. I don't know if I'll be able to get back out. <laughs> Not too bad. So I just talked to the guy that brought it in actually, and he says it used to be a teeter totter at a school, a grade school playground. And uh, he turned it into a swing. So I guess it wasn't originally a swing. That's what he made it into until it rusted out and started falling apart. So then he went ahead and scrapped it. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go. Had a lot of fun over the last couple days. Bought a lot of neat stuff. There wasn't really a whole lot of super exciting stuff that happened in this one. But you guys just got to ride along with me and see all the sort of stuff that I buy. Because you just never know what I'm going to buy next. I don't intentionally seek this stuff out. It kind of just falls in my lap half the time. I don't know what else is going on next week. Probably lots of cool stuff going to be coming in. Uh, hopefully I can get to those cleanups now that the rain finally is somewhat dried up. It's still pretty muddy, believe it or not, despite a week of 100 degree temperatures. There's still a bunch of mud holes. That's how much rain we got before it started getting hot. I went from wearing a coat three weeks ago to sweating to death now. But anyway, I'll let y'all go with that. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.